we just wanted to say a massive thank you to our podcast sponsor, Kevin Murphy, distributed by Ausdare, and thank them for being the most amazing brand partner for Salon Rising. This brand is truly incredible and we are so excited to work alongside you. Hey lovers, welcome back to The Inner Sanctum. On our latest episode, we are joined by the amazing Abby from Coco Cosmetica to talk all things about her journey in business and in life. A trigger warning for all of our listeners. In this episode, we do go into aspects of postpartum depression and mental health issues. Please know that if this is something that is triggering for you, you you're welcome to skip past this episode and you will find the details for Beyond Blue in our show notes. So for those who are staying, please enjoy listening to Abby's journey. She's incredible. We love her and we know you're going to love her too. Thanks for listening. Welcome everybody back to the Inner Sanctum Salon Rising podcast. Good morning, Samara. Good morning. Would you like to introduce our guest? I can certainly introduce our guest. This is Abby and Abby is from Coco Cosmetica on the sunny coast and has been one of my clients for a very, very long time. Yeah. Um, And is also one of my favourite humans in the world. Obviously. (laughs) Obviously. (laughs) Obviously. As all my clients are. But Abby holds a very special place in my heart. We met, I think it was my second program. Yeah, I, it was the one that Shay and Helena did. Yes. And oh, yeah. And Cheryl was also on there, but you'd been doing it for a little bit. Yeah, prior. I think it was my second program. Yeah. 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 And I was just like, we just hit it off. Yeah. Like just two peas in a pod. Yeah. Both mums, both young kids, both dealing with life. And business. And business. And multiple businesses. And yeah. But so we'll get into that. We'll get yeah. into that. So, Miss Abby, tell everybody a bit about you. Okay, well, um, yeah, I'm from the Sunshine Coast. I have a salon called Coco Cosmetica. I have three staff members um, and I've just launched a clothing line, which is super exciting. Yes. Um, I have two gorgeous babies and a FIFO husband. And yeah, that's me. <laughs> she's I'm like, just like, it's just really easy. Like just, <laughs> you know, just doing all these things. Yeah, she's got a business and her clothing line is sold out at the moment. So you can't even buy it right now because that's yeah. how popular it is. Yeah, one, I sold out my first style. My yeah. first, yeah. That's Which very is super exciting. cool. Yeah. And Abby actually drove down this morning from the Sunshine Coast. Yeah, I did. So I got up at 4 a.m., <laughs> left at 5 and still... Took me three and a half hours. And got like, here before I did. What is this shit? <laughs> <laughs> and I've met Sherelle prior to getting here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Samara just rolls on in. And she also listened to us on the pod the whole way down. So yeah. it's like we've so been hanging like, out all like morning. morning. Yeah, we have been hanging out. <laughs> so tell me, I your journey is really cool and there's lots of things that I'm going to um, poke into that I know about that I'm going to make you talk about. Okay, yeah. Um, but tell us how did you get into, like, because your salon was purchased yes, hang on one second i think we need to identify what sort of salon abby has oh yes okay it's lashes and brows yeah coco cosmetica though because i transitioned from just lashes and brows to doing a few other things like cosmetic tattooing i've dabbled in like facial treatments and things like that now it's mostly just relaxation facial treatments yeah no sort of like anything that breaks the skin barrier because i don't th- i think that's beyond our scope yeah but yeah we got the cosmetic tattooing which is really going off at the moment and yeah amazing yeah okay so let's talk about the purchasing of the business okay go from day one baby girl how old were you i was how old was i it was prior to oslo so i would have been 24 go 24 so i really love that as parents we only identify our ages by how old our children were Uh, at the time this many they were in that grade so i'm this old yeah it's like before christ (laughs) yeah yeah. Yeah. (laughs) yes B-C-B-O. <laughs> Before Oslo. Oslo does think he is Jesus. So <laughs> that probably works. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was 24. It was COVID and we lived in Gympie, which is a rural town, and we were just like, can I swear? Oh, yes, yeah, please you do. Swear. We come with a language warning. It's well, fine. yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the Salon Rising podcast. Say whatever Should've. the fuck you want. <laughs> Amazing. Well, it was COVID. My kid might give you a 50 cent fee every single time you swear. That happened this morning. But, you know, go for your life. Honestly, <laughs> Make my kids would be money. millionaires. Yeah. <laughs> right now. Um, so we were in Gympie during COVID and we we're like, fuck this shit. Let's 
get out of here. Let's go to the coast. It was always our goal to move there um, because we both like grew up in rural towns. And so we moved and Jade, the previous owner of my salon, she had a bed for rent. And yeah, so I went there. I started renting a chair. Um, The vibe in the salon at that time was like, it was a bit strange. Like I think there was a lot going on. Everyone was feeling the post-COVID like shit. Uncertainty. Yeah, Yeah, what are we doing here? It was very quiet. Um, And... Jade, the previous owner, she was on her way to be like building her businesses up to move to Mac- um to Dubai, <laughs> Mackay. <laughs> she would be like fancy, absolutely <laughs> fucking <not." laughs> um, to Dubai, and so I was kind of like watching all of that, and then I fell pregnant, which was like shit. What do we do? Because probably two weeks prior to falling pregnant. Um, we'd had the conversation of, okay, let's, you're in the mines, let's build up my clientele here at this salon. It's an amazing opportunity because it was a big salon at the time with a good reputation. Um, And let's just like have another baby when Parker starts school. I was pregnant when we were having that (laughs) conversation. (laughs) So then I found out and we were like, what? Are we going to do? I was always like, nah, guys, fuck that. Literally. (laughs) I'm I'm coming now. Hello. (laughs) Oh, what a spanner in the works. (laughs) Um, So then I was kind of just like in, I got to figure this out. I'm not going back to Gympie. There is absolutely no way. And yeah, so I like watched on, I watched um, Jade go through a few potential buyers. And then one day I was just like, why don't I buy it? We had sold, we had a house in Gympie. And I knew that we could sell that to get the cash. And I asked Brayden and he was just like, do it. And mm. I was so lucky at that time too that we did have his mining wage to fall back on. So I knew that I could buy this business, open it up and that I didn't have to pay myself a wage. Straight yeah. away. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, bought it. I remember walking in and I was like, hey, is it still for sale? And I was like... I was not good at brows then. Like I'm just going <laughs> to tell you right now, I was like not. No one is good knees. at the old days. <laughs> yeah. Jen and I were terrible when we look back. Literally. Basic AF. <laughs> I was, yeah, not good. Anyway, and she kind of turned around she looked at me and she was like, you, you want to buy it? And I was like, fuck yeah, I want to buy it. Yes. And then, so yeah, so then from there I was working there all through my pregnancy and then the the sale it finalized when Oslo was six weeks old wow (laughs) and then so I had a salon with um the rent is like a thousand dollars a week and it wasn't turning over any money I had no staff and I just had to hang on do it hang on so you had no staff no so we I had staff for about a month but they were Jade's staff and I just think like I think if anyone's going into a business and purchasing it and then walking yeah. in as the new boss and they were also working as an equal to me and then all of a sudden I was taking over. Yeah, so okay. I think it just like I don't think it was ever going to work. Mm. So I went through a little bit of a rough patch with that but not really. Um, I had one of my best friends, Brittany, helping me. She's owned a successful salon in Maribyrnong for 10 years or seven years now. So she was coming down and helping me because I had a newborn. Oh. And so I was kind of doing clients as I could. And then I had my sister come on, which was like, as you know, <laughs> it's a blessing and a curse. Um, and then we also, uh, Brittany introduced me to Charlotte. So by December, I had Charlotte and Andy and myself. And then Brittany was coming to help me. How much were you working? As often as I could. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was kind of going in between Oslo's naps and I remember doing clients with him literally on my boob oh. and just like, cause I just thought I've got to be the face of the salon. Like that's all I had. I wasn't that good at brows. So I had to, I had to get good at brows and I had to make sure that my personality like came I was going to say, cause you know, you're fucking good at brows now. Like you definitely nailed that. Thanks. I, I, I picked it up quite quickly. <laughs> <laughs> So when was it that you met me? How long into it? How was um, I took over in 2021. So it wasn't until the following November. Yeah. Okay. So a year into it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I had had a business coach 
prior to that. And I think that I just didn't, um, I didn't quite understand their way of teaching. Yeah. I, my dad has run a successful business for most of my life. So I kind of already knew, like, I knew I had to put money away for tax. Yeah. I knew I couldn't pay myself until I was making enough money to pay myself. Yeah. I knew that the girls super came first before anything. So proud of you. (laughs) And so I kind of had the fundamentals down. So I, I survived the year. Yeah. And then, yeah, when I met you, I was like, fuck yeah, let's like, let's get into it. And you, it. like, Abby was one of those people that's just like, I am going to take what you say and I'm going to run 1000% exactly where you need me to go. Like, yeah. she was yeah. just like, I, if I'm investing, I'm going to invest and go. Yeah. And I remember when you and I started talking, like, you and I hit it off immediately. It was like twin flames, yeah. 100%. But a lot of it was, how do I find the balance between motherhood, business owner I don't want to be in the salon as much because and you know it'd been a year of just like trying to handle everything with also having a FIFO husband a new baby a new business and I understood all of those things because it's exactly what I had had and it was more so about like where's I think it's like was where's my direction what do I want to do how do I plan and how do I move forward but honestly even in the last like in the last 12 months of where we've gone and where we've Mm -hmm. mapped it's it blows my mind of where you are because when you've decided something, you're just like, nah, I am doing it and I will take every little piece of advice you give and I will do it at my best of my, you know, capacity. So people go, how do I get there? It's like have that brain power of what you did and you're like, oh, I'm not going to. And really when I would talk things through, I remember when we had the conversation that one time about spray tanning and you were like, I'm just overwhelmed, I don't know how to start it and I kind of mapped it out and then all of a sudden within a week it was done. Yeah. Because you were like, yeah. oh, as soon as it was mapped out and I knew yeah. how to do it in my head and once I just did the steps and she just went and I was like, oh, my God, it's just done. And obviously moving forward now we've you've got Okoko, mm-hmm. which is your clothing, le- which is something that was such a deep passion project for you. Yeah. But yeah. I remember saying to you 12 months ago, it has to go on hold. We have to get yeah. everything of Coco working and flourishing how you want it to flourish and then we move forward. But the other really special thing about you is tell everybody about your three staff members because this is a way – you've done this very, very well and, again, it was something that we worked on. Yeah. But you've yeah. done this very well where people go, you can't have family or friends within yeah. your business. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we um, – over time you've just developed this beautiful leadership and I think that is the thing that – for me, watching you flourish has been so special is really watching you come into a leader Mm -hmm. because in the beginning it was very like, I've got to be here, I've got to be the face, it's got to be me, I can't do that, I can't do this. And you flourish as a leader. You really do. As Leading people is is so – is such a passion for you that you've realised that that you are actually really, really good at. So tell everybody because people don't think that it can happen but tell everyone about your staff members now Mm Um, and just a little bit of that journey too. So my first ever staff member, as I said earlier, is my little sister, Andy. Um, And she started working for me, I believe she actually was still at school. So she was coming down on the weekends for hockey and like fitting in a Saturday shift as she could. And she was like, she was living with me too. And I think like, honestly, she was a pain in my ass, but (laughs) my saving grace. Like, yeah. I was so, so lucky to have her. Um, And then with... So were you training her or did she have a background to start off with? No, Jade gave her a little bit of training, which I was really grateful for. That was part of the contract of sale. Yeah. And then, yeah, me and Andy kind of figured it out ourselves after that. Um, I put her through her tattooing course. Um, Well, dad put her through a tattooing course. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, dad. (laughs) Appreciate you. (laughs) Um, and then I paid for a course as well for her to do some lash training with Brooke, who is now renting in our space, which is okay. amazing as well. Yeah, but other than that, we just figured it out ourselves. Um, and eventually once she had left school, then she came on full time. Um, she is just a casual. She's a extremely good hockey player. So she does work in hockey balance. Um, but yeah, that's that's that. And then we've got Charlotte. And Charlotte, I went to school with her big brother. So I knew of her and just kind of like she became Andy's bestie and that was really hard to navigate, as oh, you know. Oh, yeah. Um, but it's just created the most beautiful little family 
within Coco and she's now um, dating one of mine and Brayden's best friends. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so <laughs> I told you. <laughs> yeah. But we make it work and honestly I think that, that it could have obviously and it does obviously for some people go the completely opposite way but between myself, Andy and Charlotte, we have built the most incredible business and clientele and family and like Oslo calls Charlotte Ani Shark. It's, yeah. it's a little family and it's like I would be lost without those two especially. Yeah. Um, between, before I met you, we, we went through a fair few staff just trying to find the right fit and the right people with the right skills. Um, but I think we had already established the love triangle between the three of us so it was very hard for to someone bring to someone fit else in. in. Yeah. So I left it. I went the Christmas period, just the three of us. And then come Feb is when I hired Jemison, and she has slot in beautifully. Mm. But I think the main thing that I did before I hired her was I said, you are walking in to a tight knit family. You laid that groundwork straight it's, off the bat. Yeah, it's going to be intimidating and it's, it might feel like it's going to be hard to fit in, but then not bitchy girls. There's, we don't do bitchy here. We don't, mention your old job we don't talk badly about other businesses we don't talk badly about each other we don't talk badly about me like we're a family and that's that you either <laughs> Brayden actually Brayden used to tell me when I first met him because he just loves his friends so much that I either fit in or fuck off <laughs> so that's pretty much <laughs> what I had to tell Jamison she's a fits in or fucks off yeah because that's, that's that's how you that's survive that's really how it is that's though, how right? it is yeah. when yeah. you have a tight family it is the case like yep. even for us we I think it's like that with anything though like you if you with anyone that you're joining your team either fit in or fuck off in any in every capacity of life yep like if I told my best friends right now I was going to add another member like <sighs> Yeah. See, they're all they're generals are eyes already. She's like, fuck another one. <laughs> but I bring good humans. I know that. But I know yeah, that. All my friends like roll their eyes like, ugh, another one. Another one. But you fit in or you fuck off. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like the wolf pack takes care of each other. And if you're gonna be out, you're gonna be out. Like you don't fuck with that. Yeah. No. And it's the same within the business. For example, we've just hired another apprentice. Um, and Nez is the sun that just shines. Like I just, I don't know how I keep doing it, but I fucking keep manifesting these insane <laughs> humans. Um, and she, I decided I needed an apprentice. Laura and I were like, we need an apprentice. I didn't even post it. And then she came out of the blue and sent me a resume. And then oh. I contacted her boss because she came from Brisbane and said, before I even contact her and she's like hire her immediately she's the best because I knew her boss and I just am so obsessed with her like we had this meeting on Friday this big overall meeting setting ourselves for the year and she's like oh my god are you gonna sage me oh my god go like <laughs> and I was like who wants to read their letter and Nessa's like me I want to read mine and I was just like I just love you so much like she's just and she was like I just feel so a part of this family and so loved and so taken care of and it's just like when you find yeah. the right people that also want to make themselves fit in your family like yeah. that's the difference like Jemison yeah. could have been like fuck this it's a job oh, but absolutely. she was like no I'm gonna make like I but want it's this also family good that you took that pause as well it's like nah this isn't the right – we're not finding the right person. So yeah. let's just sit tight Agreed. with the yeah. crew that we've got. Agreed. And then when it feels like we're ready to let someone in again, we'll look we'll again. Yeah. 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 Rather than just pushing or just taking anyone. What you meant to take. Agreed. Right. No. Yeah. We had a really hard Christmas. Um, it was hard to juggle between just the three of us and me having commitments with a FIFO husband and two small children. So then by Feb I was – we were coming into our quietest period but I was like – I need someone. Yeah. Yeah. I need to have someone here. And Jemison, bless her, has just taken it upon herself and she's fit in and she's beautiful. And yeah, I I made up a training schedule, which I think was like my saving grace mm -hmm. because she had it all. She had eight weeks completely planned out for her. She knew exactly what she was doing, what was expected of her, how many hours she was getting. So she knew that for the first like four weeks, she was only getting two days a week. Mm -hmm. And so... I hadn't overcommitted to her and she knew what to expect. What she was getting into. Yeah. See what yeah. I mean? I do. When she, yeah. <laughs> when, you, when she knows. Hashtag leadership. I know. <laughs> so much leadership. I'm so proud. And 
there's so much power in that because Abby's oh, like absolutely for, for everybody. Yeah, agreed. Everybody in that situation, the guy is powerful. Agreed. Yeah. And so I look back because this is why it's crazy that I think Ab works so fast is, you know, you were like there were certain things that you were like in five years' time we were kind of looking like in five years' time if you were doing where you were at, yep. do you remember what we'd said? Yeah, we were like I would be like stepped back from the salon, I would have launched my clothing line, my husband would be home from the mines. And you would own your own house. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Abby, what have you got right now? <laughs> <laughs> well, last year my husband spent the whole year home from the mines. I have my clothing line and I have my house. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't I don't work as often. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's like, right. So that's just collapsed that into yeah. 12 months. Yeah. 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 yeah, I know. And it is like that. So we worked together, yeah, in the, that last November. We yep. did like six, we weeks. Did six weeks. And then obviously stayed in contact because we were obsessed with each other. Yeah. Um, and the cool thing for me now is, you know, Abby did collapse time so dramatically and she was mm-hmm. just like, I'm going. Like I'm moving and I'm going to do this. And even – like she does stuff all the time. Like as she said, she had that eight weeks planned out that I feel so inspired by her. I'm like, yeah. what else? This year, and we haven't mentioned it yet, we started our mastermind, mastermind. for owners and a I, it was put out to the owners that I've worked with whether they wanted to spend a whole year together and Abby's, Abby was like, I'm in. I'm <laughs> Absolutely. so in. I didn't care if I was the only one in that yeah. mastermind. <laughs> <laughs> you and me. Yeah. And for me, that's so cool because I know what she can do. In, in 12 months. In 12 months. Yep. Like I did six weeks with her and I watched what she did. So in 12 months of being able to be like, all right, how are we resetting ourselves? Where are our goals going? But the cool thing is, is even in cool one, Abby was like, I did this. And I was like, can you send that whole template to the group? Because <laughs> yeah. we love that. And we've had some really in-depth conversations. You know, we went to a bathhouse one day and... That was so nice. That was so nice. Oh. Ugh. And you were like, I had to do a written morning this week. And I was like, she was like, to my fucking sister. Like, <laughs> yeah, and she's like, wow. I was like, wow, go you. Like, she was like, this is what I did. This is how I handled it. Everything is much better. And I was like, oh, I love you. <laughs> and it's been much better ever since. Yeah. But I think that that was also like... Me and Andy have had a lot of growth in our own sister relationship as yeah. well. And I think I had to learn a lot about her personality and how to lead her. Yep. Um, and how to lead everyone else and make them aware that she is my sister. And yes. no matter what, there's always going to be exceptions for my sister. Yeah. Yeah. Do as I say, not as she does, though. Yes. Yeah. 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 Like, because at the end of the day, and I if love you've her more made than that, else. yeah, <laughs> she, and like, you guys got to be okay with that. She's my sister, and you've made that sister. clear. So you yeah. know, do you know what I reckon it is too with you? And this is something we learned yesterday in this workshop that Samara and I did, which we'll talk about in the later podcast. But it's that whole concept of if you put seventy percent in, yeah, you'll get seventy. But Abby puts 100%, 100% in. 100% in. And that is why she gets 100% out. 100%. And yeah. that's why those time frames collapse so quickly so for her. So quickly. She's like, oh, someone's telling me to do something. Go. Done. And I think that's why I felt such a, that twin flame kind of spirit because I'm like that, mm. you know, yeah. someone else coaching me and being like, go all in. I'm like, okay. And you're very much the same. Like Jen yeah. and I are very much like someone tells us to do something, even though we want, don't want to do it, we'll do it. It's like, yeah. fuck yes, challenge yeah, accepted. Yeah, challenge accepted. When you said to me, you're like, if it feels scary jump i was like okay yeah (laughs) say less queen (laughs) (laughs) and i think too for me and it's so funny because shay and helena say this and sherelle says this and abby says this they're like you're like the mum, our big sister Mm -hmm. and it's you know as much as i go fuck guys don't make me feel fucking old i go i get it because how old are you now 27 oh my days (laughs) I turn 37 in a month and... Do you really? I do. Oh, my God. 37 in a month. And (sighs) I think I understand that journey because I've done it, you know, and for you, like you and I were talking Mm. about this and we're able to relate so much and you were like, you can see me because you've had a FIFO husband, you've had little kids, you've had a salon with babies and you like... So for me, it's almost like so powerful that I have to keep leading 
yeah. in mm-hmm. a way that I want so that others you know to where follow. Other, yeah. You know, exactly like right. I have to lead myself in a way that if others follow, I will be proud of it, not in a way that I'm like, well, don't do that. And, you know, because in the beginning it was all don't do that. Like, and I like that I can teach from my fuck ups. Don't do that. That wasn't a good idea. But now I get to lead in a way that's like, even when it is hard and it is sticky and it's, I'm in the mud, I'm like, what am I choosing? Because I'm choosing this for them. Yeah. Like if this is the path they're going to go down at any of my journey, I need to be able to lead them in a perfect way to get to there. Not just stay stuck in this fucking mud. Yeah. 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 Now your husband's gone back FIFO this year though, right? He has. He had his first swing uh, not last week, the week before, and he goes back again Wednesday. Let's just preface that though. That wasn't because of money, was it? You decided that for you guys yeah. it felt yeah. like you felt like you kind of got a better balance. Yeah. I definitely – money did play like a little bit of a role in it um, because – now that we have more income in the family, I can invest more money into the business. Okay, yeah. so that's a different money. Yeah. It's not the business it's not is not doing. Money. It's, it's a not driving money. Yeah, yeah. It's, and I think that was really cool it's about you guys. Is money, that yeah. really. I think you especially have always had a really good money mindset, and I think yeah. that was easy for me because yeah. I came on with you being like, as you said, I know taxes, I know super, I haven't got any debt, I know I can't take money. You know, we know how to save. Mm-hmm. So it was, yeah. you know, so c- coming on, you you knew money and you almost yeah. didn't have all these money mm, sitting there. So you, when you guys yeah. were ready to buy a house, you were ready so to So when forward. you came into coaching, yeah. what were you hoping to get out of it? Oh, that's a good question. Oh, God. I think that I just needed – I honestly think I just needed a cheerleader. I just yeah. needed yeah, the, okay. the direction – of a cheerleader, like I didn't need someone to sit down and tell me that How I can't buy this. as many yeah, uniforms yeah. as what I buy. <laughs> <laughs> Just so everyone I knows, know that. every shop that exists, yeah. Abby says uniform. <laughs> <laughs> she go to cook eye, uniform. She go to sports girl, uniform. Yeah. So Lana she Jane, build her uniform. own uniform <laughs> <laughs> so that other people could do the same. Absolutely. Um, but I needed someone to just be like, yes, you're doing the right thing. Yes, do this. Yes, do that. No, don't pull the trigger on that. And that's why I connected so well with Samara, I think, is because you were literally, I could see that you were just a little bit older version of me. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. okay, this There's is There's a perfect. duality there for sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And I think like um, we've got a lot of the same sort of like beliefs and things like that. So yeah. Yeah, that's what I just I needed a cheerleader out of a business coach. Pretty much our conversations were like, yes, queen, yes, yeah. queen, yes, <laughs> queen. Even the other day we were talking over voice note and I was like, hey, queen, you want to come down and do the podcast? Oh, my God, yes. I was like, do you want to come and do this? Yes. Should we do this? Yes. Like that's our whole conversation. <laughs> yeah. It's just like that really uplifted, like ready to move, move forward, not sitting in our shit. And we've even had conversations yeah. where you're like, we're both feeling a bit low, but yeah. we can bring each other out really fast. And you're yeah. not one to ever sit in the mud. No, I, I don't like it. I, <laughs> I do not like getting muddy. I no. like to get out. 2022 was a really hard year in the mud for me and I couldn't get out because of my PPD. So yep. like that, I, I don't sit in it. Yeah. I, I like to move forward. I'm a solutions girl. I'm not a let's be negative and think about all the things that are shit, girl. Do you want to talk on? Yeah. Do you yeah, want to talk we can if you yeah. want me to. Yeah, 100%. What are your questions? Just to preface this for everyone, when we're talking about PPD, we are talking about postpartum depression. Yeah. yeah. Just for anyone who has not figured out the acronym. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ausdare is showing the love to Salon Rising listeners with some incredible offers. Whether you're part of the Kevin Murphy family already or you've been thinking about partnering with Ausdare to join the Kevin Murphy crew, these limited time offers are for you. Head to ausdare.com forward slash Salon Rising and find out how Kevin Murphy and Ausdare can help your business rise. Oslo, obviously, and then six weeks later, purchased the business. It was kind of all fast paced for then over the Christmas period, getting like getting that all established, figuring it all out. And then I think basically like January 2022, kind of February 2022 is when it hit me. And so as I knew, I thought postpartum depression was that you wanted to hurt the baby or you like you hated your baby but for me 
my baby and my toddler were my I I just wanted to keep them safe mm. and I I just felt I felt like I couldn't do it all mm. and I've always felt like I could do it all that's mm. my thing like I know that I can do it all mm. and so I couldn't for me it was the fact that I had kind of and I had a great upbringing and I like I didn't feel like I had any reason to feel as shit as I felt except for buying a business <laughs> needing to retrain yourself but it's that having stuff yeah. and it's so it's so common in women that are particularly you know put together in the mm. you know in that sense and in control yeah because you f- it's like well I've always had con- control of anything yeah. mm, so absolutely. I don't understand so it's that self-judgment mm. of yeah. like no no I'm supposed to be able to deal with this exactly so yeah. what the fuck is happening I'm supposed to deal with every single hat that I have just taken yeah. on and be yeah. fine with it yeah because that's the thing I took it on yeah I was the one that chose that yeah. no shit cards were handed to me I was only ever dealt great cards yeah and so, but I was still feeling so sad. Yeah. And so anxious and so depressed. And I just couldn't figure out how to get myself the fuck out of that mindset. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. How did we get into that? Because I feel like I was when, leading into So, the, we were talking when, about. Yeah. When yeah. did you go, holy shit, this is postpartum? Oh, yeah. Probably March 2022. And I was like. Is that a realisation that you came to or did you have like professional advice guiding you that helped you to come to that? Yeah, I I got flagged when I was pregnant and then I had a um, a midwife come to my house once a week for eight weeks. So why did you get flagged when you were pregnant? That little test that you do. I get oh. I got flagged when I was pregnant yeah. too. I get yeah. terrible prepartum um, depression. Okay. Like, absolutely. Yeah hand wringing obsessive compulsive i don't remember the test driven just next level like yeah. i get i get i get that we're definitely gonna have to have a trigger warning i get suicide watch in yeah in okay. my prepartum yeah but it tends just before to start, you have the baby no for the entire pregnancy but it tends to abate once i get to the other side of it okay so it's and like you see the little baby and you're like purpose yeah but it takes a while to taper off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. We need to talk more on this. Mm. Yeah. This is this is an interesting part of friendship, guys, considering our last thing was friendship. But Jen and I weren't as close when you were pregnant with the kids. So I don't I didn't really go through your pregnancies with you. Not like you went through with mine. Yeah. So I definitely think this needs to be even deeper of conversation. Yeah. But yeah. no, I do get exactly yeah. what you're saying. So it yeah. was it during those screenings that they they picked up on it, but yeah. I was like, no, nah, not a way. No no what do they ask? I don't even they remember. They ask oh. things like, do you cry at the drop of a hat? Yeah. Can you okay. find joy in anything yeah, in the daily okay. things? Yeah. Do you laugh often? Yeah. And at that point I had a FIFO husband and a toddler and I was sick as a dog being pregnant. And I was yeah. like, fuck yeah, I cry at the drop of a hat. <laughs> no, fuck no, I don't laugh. Yeah. I do not find joy. <laughs> this is a, no. There there is no joy in life. No joy. Yeah. yeah. yeah no. Well, you be pregnant. Like, and yeah, also had a hole in his heart. I was going to fetal appointments by myself. I was contracting from 26 weeks. There was no fucking joy in that pregnancy. So I thought to myself, obviously, that's going to show up. Yeah. You get flagged for these things. Yeah. And that's when, so did it take some coaching for them to be like, no, this is actually something you really need to look at? And then what steps did you take? No, there's actually no support for women with mental health issues. There's zero. Yeah. Yeah. I the nurse flagged me and she said you're going to need help. She was doing all that she possibly could cuz she obviously just worked for the public system. Yep. And I rang around and I couldn't get in to see anyone until October. Oh my gosh. I yeah, I had him in July and it was October 2022 that I could get like it was more than a year before I could yeah. get in to see a um someone who specialized in um, pre and postnatal. Did you manage to get something close to home or did you need to come down to Brisbane? Um, no, I got someone who was incredible in the Sunshine Coast and yeah. she really helped me through it. Um, we like spoke on medication, but I never wanted to do that. I knew that inherently I was a really happy person. So I knew that I could get through it myself. It just took, it took a while. Yeah. What do you think were the steps that got you out? How long do you think it take you and what do you think the steps were that? got you out 
Um, well, I decided literally before New Year's of 2022 that in 2023 I wasn't going to be depressed. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and because it's Abby, Abby, <laughs> yeah. because it's Abby, Abby exactly what she happened. She was just like, and January 1, I'm everything is fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Mindset not. though, right? Yeah. Like, and come January 1, I will no longer be depressed. Yes. Which is not the case. It's no. It's yeah. you, we, I had to put in a lot of work and... My husband had to put in a lot of work with me and we had to work towards those things. The, the, I think I had 10 sessions with a psychologist and that really did help. I think she made me realise that you can't control anything other than your own reaction, inaction, yeah. action. You can't control anyone but yourself. So mm. to make myself feel better, I had to make sure that I was putting in the work to make myself feel better. Mm. Like I fully believe that you are what you eat and not just food as in like the things that you're watching. The yeah, things anything that, you're consuming. Anything yes. that yes. you're consuming, anything that you're telling yourself. Yeah. So I had to go from telling myself that I wasn't worthy of having the business, that I wasn't worthy of feeling sad or stressed because I was given all of these things so fortunately and there's other people out there who they won't eat today. Yeah. Like there's people in much worse situations. So I had to retrain myself to speak more positively yep. around my situation and give myself space to feel stress when I needed to and then move on from it. That's pretty powerful. No, like you are definitely an old soul because knowing how to do that, you know, even taking control and, you know, mental health is massive. Like, yeah, yeah. you know. I'm, I'm sure Jen will be okay with me saying this because I'm going to say I'm I'm on. Oh um, yeah, we are both. We're on both on anxiety, anxiety medication. Medication. Yeah. Um, with everything that I have been through in the last sort of sort of six months. But I was like you, like I I have only been on anxiety medication um for the last couple of years because I was like you with that. It's like no, I've dealt with this. I can deal with this and mm. I can get through it. Yeah. But it was only in the last few years with just a huge amount of grief and loss that mm. it's yeah. like oh okay no. I th- think I'm actually capped out at the capacity yeah. Yeah. and I do need a little bit of like as much as I can mindset and and do the things mm-hmm. I actually think I need a little bit of extra Absolutely. support and yeah. I think you yeah. get to get to that point and I think uh, again I think it'll be another topic that we do because I think mental health is really important For and sure. we need to speak on it because yeah. people will look potentially even at us and go they've got their shit together and they're successful and everything's good and it's like yeah but there came a point and I am a very positive person yeah. and I am more dedicated than I have ever been to doing those things that you said, yeah. making sure that I'm taking time for my health, like yeah. I'm working out, making sure that I'm eating well, making sure and no more than I have been even in the last month have I yeah. been so, in, in, especially in the last six months, so dedicated to my own growth. But I knew that there was a point that it felt too I was fighting too hard. Like that fight or flight response in me was so bad. Yeah. The anxiety was so high that I could not control. It wasn't mm-hmm. because of my situation that I could change. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That Some, I think and that, see, yeah. that's with you when yeah, experiencing these things with pregnancy as well. You, there's also hormonal changes. Yeah. yeah and I because I am a that. lot older than both of you yeah. and in my mid-40s and in like I'm in so the So you like new Mary uh, – perimenopausal yes yeah and that's what's done that tip again towards it being it's like okay now and again they they said they reckon that the issue was i'm so progesterone sensitive yeah yeah that that's what tips it all and because you have to be full of progesterone to hold a baby in yeah Yeah. because without it your baby can't you lose your pregnancy yeah Yeah. and so being so sensitive to it is what sets my brain off like that yeah Yeah, wow Yeah. yeah and i think that that's where there probably needs to be I mean, this is a massive segue from our conversation, yeah. but <laughs> I think that there needs to be more awareness 100%. and more facilities for women's and men's mental health. But particularly, I think there needs to be some more conversation around like the fact that some people's depression and anxiety does come from a hormonal imbalance. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes you do need medication yep. to help that. Like, yeah. I'm all for and I think too, it's being okay and knowing those steps of, oh, this is where I'm at. And I 
have a an and amazing not judging yourself and for not it. judging yourself for yeah. it or yeah. anyone else or yeah. anyone else. Yeah. I've got an incredible Jen and I've got an incredible doctor who is actually a client of oh, mine. Oh, yeah, she's amazing. And I text her and I was like, I am bottoming out. Like, can I see you? And she was like, You will be here today at five o'clock. You'll be my last client. And she spent so long with me, and she was like, You are very high for stress and very high for anxiety. Yeah. And I wasn't on the depression side because I could still find lots of joy, but I was heightened. Yeah. And she's like, I will do whatever you want, but she's like, But I really think I need to get you on a low dose to try and just take the edge off. Yeah. And does it help? It really helped. Like yeah. just take that and. Jen yeah. could Jen it's can just say that, it, right? It's just that your cup's like at the top and it just takes it down a notch. Yeah. You know, yeah. like it, it just, just feels like yeah. the sky isn't falling all the time when it feels yeah. so overwhelming. Um, and she just said, stay on it for six months and then decide yeah. because I've never had to need it before. And I will definitely come off, but it has definitely kept me at a really beautiful, like kind of calm, peaceful kind of flow that I've yeah. needed um, throughout this It just kind of gives journey. you that space. Yeah. It allows that space. And as you said, psychology as well. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah lots absolutely. Of, lots of growth, lots of psychology, lots of reading, lots of – it's not, okay, I'm going to take medication, that's all I'm going to do. Yeah. It's not like a Band-Aid. No. It's like, okay, this is just part of the toolkit that I am using to address this. Yeah. Yes. And there's yeah. lots of facets in that toolkit yeah. as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. It is consuming all of the – books and podcasts and things that I can do for myself and knowing and and really tuning in on what actually is making me feel good right now yeah like what is it and what is and as we all know and we've spoken about in the last podcast who I'm surrounding myself with yeah because it's that what you're consuming again right yeah yeah the people that you're consuming yeah and everything contributes and I think that like we all three of us I obviously probably can't speak for the two of you, but I feel like we're all very lucky to have access to be able to have those tools. Oh, yes, There are some people yeah. out there struggling, a lot of people out there struggling that don't have access to go and buy themselves a book. Or don't yes. know or see a doctor. Ha- or don't, don't know, know where how. to start. Yeah. Don't know how. Yeah. Don't, don't know have how the right people around them. Yeah. Like yeah. some people can't get them out of, themselves out of that. Yeah. So I like finding gratitude in the fact that we even have the space to try and make ourselves feel better is really important it's so important yeah so important yeah um that was quite a pivot oh i know i like it guys no (laughs) No, i think that's where it needed to go yeah i i definitely do because i think mindset is so much of you know and i think too people look from the outside and i never want to always look like we've all got our shit Mm -hmm. together because yeah Yeah. there's been roads then you're not living you're not You're not living and then on the other side of this so we were having a conversation about this in the mastermind call actually Mm -hmm. about how come the other side of this and this is a pivot again you almost feel like you hold yourself back from saying things are awesome because you feel like you can't give yourself that grace yeah so you know i was talking to abby about this and abby's like people will be like how's the business and abby will be like oh it's good but it's so busy and so much and then abby thinks why the fuck do i just say that i love my business i don't feel like that at all because then you spend the next like well, the rest of the day going, oh, fuck, I'm stressed. Fuck the business. Fuck, the kids are naughty. Like, nah. Yeah. Stop that noise. Yeah. People, I think, especially in Aust- I think it might be like an Australian thing from yep. talking to a few different people, like the tall poppy syndrome. People yes. are looking for you to be struggling. So yeah. the first thing, the first narrative you go to give anyone when they ask something is negative. It's like, it's yes. good, but here's the hard think, part. Yes. That's right. That's yeah. right. Oh, it works really good, but I'm tired. Yeah. And we all yeah. do it. So it's like oh, consci- it's really busy but it's a lot. Consciously yeah. today yeah. even I give everybody that um, conscious thought of when someone says something to you, how can you be like, it's amazing. Yeah. And it's – we were talking about this yesterday. One of yeah. my best – you knew I was going to bring this I up. I did. I <laughs> did. My best friend Trace who we speak about all the time, she actually walked in this I morning. I think and I met d- her, right, at the first Yes, you did. Yes, you did. She yeah. was so cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, you were like, I fucking love that yeah. girl. She was so funny. She's the tip. But that's, yeah. that's a perfect so, example of how she came up in the conversation yesterday. Yeah, so – How she is like that. We were talking about, you know, the feminine and what that feels like and, and they'd said to Jen, like, is there one person in your life that when you go, oh when someone says to him you look really nice today she just goes oh thanks instead of oh i just threw this together i'm exhausted oh it was really cheap yeah. oh it's not even mine i borrowed and it trace yes. always just accepts a compliment with like she's yeah. thanks and i'm just yes. like 
I want to be more like you because yes. I'm normally like, oh, I'm tired or, oh, it's old or so she's been living with me at the moment. So and every morning I get up and my goddaughter was like, oh, Animara, you look so cute every morning. And it's funny because she cap- happened to come over this morning. The first thing she walked in, she was like, Animara, you look so cute. And I was like, oh, thanks. Like, so I'm again being really conscious yeah. of how often instead of, and I think, we do it because we're like we don't want to feel full of ourselves. We don't want to be like exactly the right. business is amazing yeah. and people are like, oh. But like, at the end of the day, the person who's given you the compliment isn't going to spend the rest of the day thinking, oh, she's tired. Oh, yeah. she, she just threw yeah. that outfit together. Yeah. But you're going to then spend the rest of the day being like, because your maybe words are powerful. Tired. Maybe yeah. this you put a, that out there. Yeah. yeah. Maybe this is a shit outfit. Yeah. Maybe. You know? You're telling yourself all yeah. of that thing because you're like, work's amazing, but I'm exhausted. So yeah. all your all your body's going, you're exhausted, you're exhausted, you're exactly. exhausted, you're yeah. exhausted. It's like that self-talk. Like what is that self-talk? And yeah. Yeah. yesterday, again, this will be next podcast, but yesterday Jen and I spoke a lot on uh, like the conversation that was had was a lot of that self-talk. Yeah. And it's so true, you know, like mm-hmm. even this morning, I'm really hard on myself, on my stomach. And which sounds stupid. I have birthed three beautiful children out of this yeah, you're tummy. Incredible. Um, but it's the one thing that no one would look at it and say anything. But for me, it's my – so this morning I just stood there with my hands on my stomach for so long and was just like like just positive self-talk because yeah. there will be a point today I will rip myself down. But if I can like give myself some of that in the morning, then at least I'm counteracting what subconsciously my mind is used to doing. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I think that it is all through how we talk to ourselves and how we move through that. And it is, it is that mindset of yeah. of the tools, of the self-talk, of, you know, all of those things compacting and almost getting to the point where you want that change too. Like, yeah. and you can stay in it for as long as you want, but yeah. it's your, and we, this was the thing yesterday too, it's like, it's your decision. You yeah. pick your hard yeah. yeah, you, you know, always have the choice of yeah. what your the yeah, hard absolutely. dealing with is. Yeah. yeah, so if you're in it and you think I'm so stuck, like what is your option out of that? Yeah. Can you go yeah. and see a doctor? Can you do something today for yourself that just makes you feel 1% better? Like and how can we move forward positively every day in the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest of ways? Yeah. Nothing yeah. – is stupid, nothing extravagant, nothing, change your whole life in one day because we all know that doesn't work. It is yeah. just making the choice to decide on that day that it is, is a step forward. See, I'm really interested now to talk about um, because I know how good you are with planning and prepping and, mm-hmm. and having all these things in place. So what have you sort of done knowing now that your hubby's gone back to FIFO? Mm. Like how are you coping with like business yeah. and family? What things have you put in place? Yeah. So school has actually been really good for me. Parker started school. Oh, um, and excellent. so having that regimen of mm. I have to have her there by 8.23 when the bell rings and I have to be there at 2.50, I don't get the space in my day to like move clients around and flutter off and flutter back into the salon and mm. do whatever the fuck I want until maybe 4.30 when I go and get the kids and then I'm stressed all afternoon because I've not done anything. That's how my life ran last yeah. time he was FIFO. And even last year, he gave me a lot of space to just do what I needed to do and be me. He kind of had the house and the kids under control. So when he went back for his first week, I all of a sudden was doing all the things that I knew that I had to do. Prep the lunch boxes, prep the clothes on the kitchen table, make sure my house was clean. Like mm. I'm... A filthy queen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, girl. I got up at five o'clock to clean before my nanny got there because yeah. I was just like, ugh, we'd all been sick. And I was like, this place is a swamp. Yeah, <laughs> literally. And I like my swamp. <laughs> but <laughs> I last week I had to make sure that I put my phone down and before I was allowed to read or before I was allowed to scroll, I had to make sure that I was doing the dishes and I was putting her uniforms on to wash and I was making sure that Oslo's bed was made and ready for him to go to sleep. Like I had to – I just made sure that I was doing all of those yeah. Yeah. things and I think like the regiment of school helped with that as yeah, well. Yeah, it does because it's also that accountability to but somewhere also, else. And I have to show up for her. Like yeah. it's At the end of the day, I love well. that because how many people are like, ugh, school, it's so regimented and Abby's mindset is like – 
it's really helped me yeah. to move forward, to make the right steps, to be on My time. My kids can be so much better when they're oh, during like the a schedule. School term. Kids yeah. love a schedule. Yeah. Yeah. You told me that. Yeah. Kids love yeah. a schedule. Samara helped me sleep train in that <laughs> oh. six weeks of coaching. Well, you're what did I do? I'm like, we s- <laughs> together we sleep train Oslo. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, this is what you're doing tonight. And, you know, that was probably the best thing I gave her. And he slept also, through ever since. <laughs> I told Samara to sleep train because when she was pregnant, she was at my house and my daughter was sleep trained. And I was like, right, she'll go to bed at this time and we'll have our brunch and then we'll wake her up at that time. She's like, see, see, because I can't remember who it was before you had had Alba who was like, no, 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 we don't sleep train. We didn't. And you're like, no, fuck this. This is what oh, I'm, I'm, oh, this is what I'm, all I'm about. A, Like my sister was really strict with the boys. Yep. Anna was strict with the twins. And then that was my sister's best friend. So Tiff was strict. You was like, so I watched people who had these like amazing babies who just slept and I was like, I'll be doing that. Yep. Thank you very much. Yep. I'll be doing that. And I was just like, no, this is how I'm going to do things. Exactly how they do it because they do it well. And yep. I think that applies to all areas in life. Yeah. Who's doing things well and how the fuck can I copy them? Because yeah. they yeah. have got their shit Seriously. together. So how yep. can I be that? Yeah. That's how I live my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> and like I, I hate copycats as well. Like I, I genuinely hate it if someone directly copies me. But at the same time, but I've there's copying to... and then there's inspiration. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I like Agreed. what you've got going on. Yes, absolutely. Am I going to go down that path? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I make agree. it your own. Yes, agree. And like, yeah, take inspiration from people all fucking day. So lastly, before we wrap like up. wrap up, because yeah. I feel like this went on so many different, but I'm yeah. yeah. here for it. Coco is your oh, yeah. new baby. Yes. yes. Um, your clothing label, tell us about that. Okay, so I birthed a clothing label. <laughs> <laughs> I worked hard all year last year on it um, and launched on November 11th. So we have um, rompers, T-shirts, and we've got a dress coming yes. and another little play suit. Um, and I've just had the first sample for our new, like, men's, women's T-shirts, a little bit oh, longer. Oh, cool. So yep. tell me, because I love this, yep. your purpose behind it, because that was something you and I discussed. What was your purpose behind Ococo so that it was different to just any other clothing label? Do you remember? Why did you design Ococo? For who? For salon owners. Oh, there you go. <laughs> she was like, what are we talking about? I was like, we know what this is. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, I I found that I couldn't find anything comfortable to wear to work that wasn't active wear but also was comfortable, like active yeah, wear. Like yeah. I yeah. didn't want – I didn't want a big active wear label slapped on it and I wanted to feel like I could wear my cute boots with my comfy – romper but yep. i felt like i couldn't do that when i was literally wearing active wear yeah so that's yeah i was like abby my goal is to like get my body so fit that i can wear a romper and feel Same. good in it. like i was like i'm not you buying it until i'm fit enough no i still i will feel rompy in a romper <laughs> 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 i was like i do not look like abby or charlotte yet. but you know interestingly enough my size my biggest sizes were the first ones to sell out wow. so i'm really happy that like those sizes felt confident and happy yes. to purchase that and they will look great in it. You know? Okay, like, tell me what awesome. happened on the weekend as we... <laughs> I was literally driving on the road and a girl crossed the road in my romper and I was like, oh, stop! That's amazing. And I like, looked her up and down. I looked at the back and the sleeves and I was like, that's definitely my romper. That is an Ococo romper yes. in the wild on a random. <laughs> I was like... Yes. <laughs> Finally. That is so pretty oh, cool. Coco's in the wild. Oh, Coco's in the wild. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Um, thank you. That's okay. For driving yeah, all the way thank down. Thank you so much. For going so deep because we didn't think it was going to go there. But I. Yeah. Do you want me to read you my letter to 2023? Um, yes. I, I wrote it quickly because I didn't actually have anything and then I wrote it quickly because I was like, she might ask me that. Oh, my God. I fucking love this. 2023 or so to 2024? No, you told us to write yeah. a letter to 2023. Yep. And I've been pondering on it because you said, like, we'll write it and burn it and yep. and say goodbye. And I was like, I don't really like... Thank it for the lessons. Thank it yep. for the things yeah. you've got. Well, yeah. Do you want to hear it? Ready. I do. We're ready. I do. Go. Go. This Jen, is a perfect it. way to finish this yes. out. <gasps> Abby, I'm so proud. Dear 2023, thank you. Thank you for a year of growth. Thank you for my chance to rest. Thank you for better mental health. Thank you for a year with my husband. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for the road bumps along the way that proved to me that I was inherently stronger than I thought I was in 2022. 
Thank you for keeping my family happy, healthy and safe. Thank you for showing that I can change other people. I can't change other people's opinions of me and that's okay. Thank you, 2023. I love you. Oh, <laughs> God, just emotional 24 hours. <laughs> Go along. That's beautiful. I'm a puddle. Um, oh, Abby, See? that's so beautiful. I'm so proud of you. I love you. Got little sweaty um, hands. I don't, I don't even <laughs> care. I love that you did that. Yeah, I really do too. I so, really do too. Yeah. Look, this is what our family is made of in yeah. Salon Rising, right? Yeah. Powerful fucking women that have gone through <sighs> big shit. <laughs> Jen's gone. So on that note, <laughs> on that note, um, yeah. Thank if you. If so you have much. loved this episode, go over to Coco Cosmetica or yeah. O Coco and give Ab some love because I'm Buy sure. Buy a she romper would... and take a photo in the wild. <laughs> <laughs> and post it to Instagram. <laughs> Her yeah. shit on the world. Please. Yeah. Um, because it is so empowering when we have women like this of business yeah. owners that have gone through this at a young age, kids, FIFO husbands, postpartum depre- like it is a whole lot, and you are just thriving. Thanks. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. I love Likewise. you. Thank I love you, you for too. coming on. I love, love you, too, you Abby. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank Thanks so much. Bye. 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 Ausdare is showing the love to sell on rising listeners with some incredible offers. Head to ausdare.com forward slash sell on rising and find out how Kevin Murphy and Ausdare can help your business rise.